Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. How are we doing today? Fantastic. All right. So today we're going to have Trey Watson in, and he's not here yet, so we can all make fun of him while he's not here. Um, and uh, I'll introduce him here in just a second. But you guys are two days into this journey. Give me some feedback. What are you thinking so far? I know I can count on you. What you got? <laughs> it's been. Uh... Definitely, I was talking to my wife last night. It's just good to be around everybody and kind of around the five mm -hmm. to where it's supposed to meet. Me. Yeah. And I would have just kind of sat there and been comfortable otherwise. It really, it sparks it, it ignites it, it pushes you into action, right? That's awesome. What about this side of the room? What are you guys getting from this so far? Emmy, hold on. Uh, Emmy, <laughs> yes. What are you getting? A lot. Everything. I mean, like the whole mindset changing and showing up makes a difference. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. It's put me back in the mindset and it's put me back in touch with my database. Get stuff moving forward and I see a right, right, right 23. Mm -hmm. I do too. And he's got a new haircut, guys. So <laughs> looks good. Looks good. Um, awesome. Any big wins so far? from some of these amazing contacts you guys have been doing already? Not yet. Not yet. I had one yesterday. Um, I'm just going through my list because like I told you, I've got, I've got at least two sales in my database. So I'm trying to find them. And um, I called yesterday and asked for the person who was in my database and she wasn't there it was her husband and he goes what do you need and so i started talking to him and at, at first I, I thought i've lost this one it's already over i'm done and i was like okay just keep going and we had the whole conversation that they're thinking about selling their their mobile home which they've just updated they got everything done so they can get into a fixed home and la 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 so i got very close to an appointment but she, she has surgery on Friday. Mm -hmm. So surgery gets in the way of this stuff. And he said, but this is really interesting. You've actually got us. Now I'm really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So um, he said he would call me back. And if he doesn't call me back, I have an appointment on my calendar to call him back. So absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. Right. Because but immediately I was like, oh, it's over. You know, I'm like, ah, eh, never mind. I'll be talking. No, you have to keep going. Keep going. Right? Yeah. So we when we talk about you know conditions or objections, surgery is mm -hmm. a condition. There's not much that she can do except be there mm -hmm. at the right time and keep pushing forward. Yeah. Excellent. So in the back of the room, guys, I do have your extra cards. Remember your daily successes. We talked about it yesterday. You got to talk to 10 people. You got to write your note cards. You got to make your 1051 post and you got to add 10 people to your database, right? So far, I've only had like four or five people come back there and give me their cards. Mindy was so great. She did it yesterday. She's like, give me more. I'm ready. So once you get those, I'm going to ask you those questions. And that's your time. That's your accountability factor right there. I'm going to ask you. And what I said yesterday, you might lie to me once. You're not going to lie to the accountability partner. And you're certainly, hopefully not lying to yourself, right? So it's my little guilt trip for you. It's the mom and me coming out. I'm going to guilt you into doing your activities if you won't do them yourself. Um, so today, today is... Session three of the first section, connect with your market. We've got Trey Watson here. Um, Trey has been, we're, we're trying to do math here, so maybe y'all can help us out who's been in the business longer. Um, we know. think between seven and eight years. <laughs> Licensed in 2016, is that right? Yeah. Trey does over 7 million in volume, and so he is in the top 10% of our market center. Trey is also one of our ALC members, so we will talk more about that another time. However, without further ado, here is Trey Watson. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cool. So you kind of already did. I was going to go over. Oh, this please do already. Well, you'll go back and forth. There's your stuff. Okay, cool. This is mine, or this is everybody That's yours. else's. That's what everybody sees. Okay, I'm going to pull mine up too, so I don't lead anybody astray. Okay, so I'm kind of want to. I do this probably a little bit differently, but I like open conversations. I like everybody talking because questions lead to answers, and answers lead to more questions. So um, I want this to be fully. I want everybody to participate fully. Who is anybody in here brand new, not done a deal? Okay. Or how many people won the seven deals? Anybody over seven deals? Okay, very good. So we've got a little bit of everybody here. Um, we are our first exercise here. So we're talking about connecting with your market. Um, has anybody heard the term shift in the past 
six months, everybody can get cool, so we know what's going on a little bit at least. Um, we're going to talk a lot about connecting with your market. Obviously, that's what this session is for. We're going to talk about connecting with our market through the shift um, and what that looks like to be able to understand what's happening. Because if we understand what's happening, we can explain that to people. If we can explain it to people, we're going to sound like we're smart, maybe, right? Okay, a little bit. Somebody laugh, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so first off, what we're going to do is to generate a little activity. We're going to partner up, and we're just going to take two minutes real quick, um, find a partner, and I want two questions from each group. We are not going to answer these questions right now, but I want everybody talking about what questions they have um, for connecting with your market. Okay, so find a partner. Each group comes up with two questions. You have two minutes. Ready, set, go. Okay. 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 Okay.
So that's your starting point. Okay. Two questions from you guys. What are your two questions that we want to talk to the spokesperson? My question was, what does it mean to connect with your market? What exactly do you mean by that? Okay, cool. You guys hear that in the back? What is it? What does it actually mean to connect with your market? Is question number one. Question number two. I mean, a seller could be asking you, how fast will my house sell in this bunch of right now? Okay. And we've got to give them facts and stats to back up whatever we think. Okay. Go ahead. I said, how can I be more knowledgeable or up to date with each day of the market? Okay, so what? how can our knowledge increase daily? Okay. Um, what to say whenever the, they say the market's not good enough right now. Okay, did you write that on your cup? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Cool. It works. Love it. Okay, say it again. I was distracted. Um, <laughs> um, the market's not good enough right now. Okay, cool. So how do we combat that objection, right? Okay. You guys go ahead. Um, I wrote them all down, so I'll say, um, how can I overcome the objection of the interest rates? Um, how do we motivate those concerned with the higher sales prices? And um, how do we how do we create motivation during this shift? Okay, so they're cool. kind of the same, but it's so, a little different. Yeah, how do we get people to understand that it's not gonna be the end of the world if they buy or right. sell right now, right? right? Okay, cool, good job. Okay, you guys go ahead. Bob, you got it? Okay, you got it. Mine was um, just basically the same thing she said, is how can you be more knowledgeable about it? So when your your, your people ask you, um, you know, about the market, you can kind of give them more of an informed thing and maybe be able to predict it a little bit. Okay, cool. Rob? I got uh, the two I've got is, uh, how has days on market changes compared to the last two years and two with ongoing market changes, how has this affected home sale prices? Okay, cool. I know you came in late, but we're just asking our one question connecting with your market. What question would you have that you would like answered today? How do I find out more information? Okay, cool. That's a good one. Okay, you guys in the back. Yeah, um, I got ours. Um, mine is how to effectively communicate with my sellers the shift and how important pricing is versus what I call monopoly money, where they just you know price it above and hope to get a price for that. I'm, there's some kind of a gap somewhere that I'm missing and I'm not effectively communicating. So um, okay. if I could com communicate the market a little bit better. Cool. Um, and then his was uh, the most important things to share with your clients is someone who's still figuring out how to interpret the market. Very cool, love it. Okay, we're gonna start up here with you guys. We, we did, um, what are buyers or or sellers worried about in this market, just kind of overall, cool. and how to create an effective CMA in this market. Okay, cool, perfect. Um, we've got a couple, how are you setting the buyers and sellers expectations comparing to last year, educating them on the 30 day market is more realistic versus two day market. Okay. Um, and I had a good one on, who is your favorite professional banker to help educate buyers or sellers on the interest rate and because to me, it's an agent and possibly a banker educating together cool. to get enough data to help them understand what they have to overcome. Okay, cool. Then we can get into social media posts with that agent too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that yeah. too? Uh, yeah. Well, we also talked about um, wanting to know how you specifically reply to the, the question everybody's asking, where, where do you see the market in three months, six months, mm -hmm. and um, what kind of, how, how do you respond to that when it's asked? From a buyer yeah. versus when a when a seller is asking you that same question. Cool. Um, let's hear what you say. Okay, cool. 
Awesome. Is that all three? Mm -hmm. We hear three from there. Okay. Go ahead. Um, uh, the first question is, how do I stay knowledgeable and up to date with the current market, and how do I handle objections about the current market? Okay. Cool. Ours are very similar. How often do we touch base with our clients about the shift without being annoying? Okay. <laughs> um, what is the key information during this shift for us to know to be able to communicate effectively with our client base? Okay. Perfect. Love it. You guys? We were, there are four of us. Yep. Yeah. So um, one of them, our questions was how to, how many days on the market are things staying on the market in different price ranges, like a two hundred thousand dollar house versus a seven hundred thousand dollar house. So cool. kind of that's yeah, kind of general there. consensus for yeah yeah. The other thing we just had a, a I have a question like on renters and how to kind of tap into that market. Cool. Okay, that's awesome. So it sounds like the majority of the questions are a. How do we interpret the market? How do we find the stats? And how do we understand it? And then B, how do we relay that to our people? Right? Is that okay? Very general. Cool. Okay. So obviously we're in session three, connect with your market. I'm going to blow through some of this stuff. Sorry, Heidi. We'll just kind of go through the stuff that seems unimportant or not as important as others. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to get to know your market. So we're going to talk about what you guys just said. Um, how do we find those stats was a question. How do we understand those stats? How do they compare to the past two years, the past three years, the past four years, whatever? Um, and then we're going to build our expertise. How do we go in and find? So we're going to talk a little bit about macro markets, micro markets today, um, building your expertise in those so you can relay that information. We're going to talk about resources and then at the end, obviously, recap and ahas and daily success habits. Um, so first part, we're going to understand. Question in the back, we talked about how do we go and find these stats? Where are we going to? Um, how many people were at team meeting yesterday? Show of hands. Okay. Get into team meeting. Mike Brown, and I'm going to use Mike Brown in several examples. Mike Brown is incredible at always updating, and he will tell you this as well. He posts it to their Facebook page every week. He posts days on market. He posts average sales price, and he posts active listings. Um, he explains all of this in team meetings every week. Team meetings are incredibly important to be at and understanding this stuff. And they also talk about how to relay this to your clients as well. So number one tip that I'm going to tell you when how do we find this information out, be in team meeting. Um, if you can't make it, zoom in. If you can't make that, go to Mike Brown's Facebook page because he posted there. Um, okay, so here's the truth. If it has been done in another market, it can be done in your market. Once it has been done, no matter where, it's just a matter of finding out how that can be possible in your world. So direct quote from Gary Keller. Um, this is all over the shift book. This is all, all over MREA. There are models for everything in this business, including finding out market statistics. I know this is kind of a general broad view of what we can do. If somebody has done it here, we can do it also. Don't go reinvent the wheel. That's going to be the number one thing, especially for the new agents. I think the number one reason that new agents fail in this business is because they come in and they try to be too creative. Um, and if you've read the MREA, you understand that. There's a whole section on that. We have, and this is the huge thing with Keller Williams, guys, is those of you that have been here understand this. Those are the, of you that are new learn from our mistakes that didn't start out here and did it the hard way. Um, we have all of the tools and resources. These classes, you guys being in these classes, you guys being at team meetings, stuff like that, take advantage of these because we have so many awesome people in here that have done this already and done it at a super high level. Follow what they are doing. Don't try and go out and be creative. Do what works. It's going to save you a whole lot of time, um, unlike a lot of us did starting out. So we are starting out and know your market. What this means, I think this was a question, is what exactly does this mean, knowing our market and connecting with our market? Number one, it's knowing the statistics, right? It's knowing how many houses are available in a certain area. It's knowing how long they're sitting on the market. It's knowing average price per square foot and what things are selling for. Is there a subdivision with basements, upstairs, pools, whatever it might be. We've seen some weird stuff in houses, obviously, so there's some weird stuff out there. Um, so we're knowing and connecting with our market is all about research and preparation. Who has heard and through the shift can tell us where we are at right now? So by definition, what's the buyer's market? More than seven months of inventory. You guys were just talking about this, I think is what I heard. 
So we've got more than seven months of inventory as a buyer's market. That's where there are more houses available than buyers. Buyers have complete pick of what they want to buy. What we did starting out, and this was, Shannon, remember this in 2016. Um, if you're in the business then, was anybody in the business before 2019? I know there's a few in here. Okay. Um, so you guys remember showing 10 houses a weekend to the same person. We then think about it for 10 days, and then we then write an offer on one or two of them even, write them super low and hope that we get one, right? We remember that? It hasn't been like that the past two years. Who's gotten licensed after 2018? The rest of everybody, right? Um, it hasn't been like that the past two years. A house would pop up. Our buyers would send it to us. We'd have to get out there in four hours to go see it. We'd have to have the offer written 30 minutes later. Um, and we'd be one of 10 people that have done the same thing, right? In this shift that we're going towards, because that was a seller's market, okay? Where the sellers had all of the power, by definition, that's less than five months of inventory, a true balanced market where there's the same number of sellers, the same number of buyers is six months worth of inventory. Will you explain what six months worth of inventory is? Is that what you guys were just talking about as far as assumption rate? And what is our, first, let's define assumption rate. Assumption rate is the amount of homes that, the amount of homes that, if no new home come on the market today, that in one month, all the houses would be gone. Okay. And, and so if we had that for six months or five to seven months is what they call it. If we have enough houses on the market today, to supply our buyers with houses, we would run out of houses in six months. Does that make sense? Okay. So if we are less than six months, we're in a seller's market by definition, meaning there are more sellers, I'm sorry, there are more buyers than sellers. So buyers have less options on what house they can buy. As we saw the past two years, what that meant was a house would pop up on a Thursday afternoon at 2 p.m. and we'd have to have our offer in by 2.30, right? It's a little bit of an exaggeration. You can laugh. Um, I was thinking about it. Well, it's true. Yeah. I mean, all of it. And there's still deals out there like that, right? Has anybody had to write an offer that's competed with multiple offers in the past two months? Yeah. Okay. So we're still there. What is our assumption rate right now? 1.06. 1.06. Okay. So if we don't list any more houses, we're out of houses in a month. So you can see where that fits in here. By definition, on paper, we are in a seller's market. For those of you, those of us that have been in the market for the past three years or been licensed for the past three years, today does not feel like a seller's market, does it? Anybody? No? Matter with, with houses selling, we're going to get into these numbers here in a second. Houses are now sitting for X amount of days on market. I think it's around 30. We'll get into that here in a second. Um, a year and a half ago, I think it was seven or something like that is the average days on market. And so that's all of our junkers that are sitting there. That's all of our million and $2 million, $2 million houses that take longer to sell. Seven days was the average. Right now we're at 30. When I got into the business in 2016, it was 45. So 30 sounds pretty good still. It's going to be just like interest rates. You talk to your parents or your grandparents or their parents, whoever it is, and they say 6.5% interest rate doesn't sound that bad, right? Two years ago, we were getting 2.75. 6.5 sounds like it kind of sucky, right? Grand scheme of things, it's not. So here's what we're going to get into is the statistics of that, why it's really not that bad right now, and then how to relay that to our buyers and sellers. Um, okay, so inventory. What is the inventory in our market? Does anybody have the multi-year trends um, or have Mike Brown's Facebook page pulled up right now that could tell us how many active listings we have? Like 1352. I'm pulling up this page. Like right now, active listings is 362, according to the MLS. It, it says still no new listings, 225. Okay, so that's new listings. How many are on the market currently right now? And it should be higher than the 300 mark. 
Oh, Mike Brown posted oh, there it. Is. 13, yeah, 15, sorry, it was 13, oh, 1251. 1251. 1251. Yeah, okay. Springfield area. Okay. You're good. You're good. I got it all. It's, it's still sad. This still yeah. doesn't sound like very much. Okay. So I'm going to pull up Mike's post. Um, do, do you have Mike's post pulled up? Yes. Right now? Okay. So we have how many houses on the market? 1251. 1251. Okay. If we went back a year and a half ago, that would sound like a lot. Does anybody, anybody remember what the lowest point we got down to was? 600? No, I think like 125. Maybe 121. Maybe it was less it than that. In January 2021, 185. 185. That's on this post. Okay. Yeah. And that 2021 was funky because we still had some COVID stuff going on. Um, um, it looks like the lowest was uh, like 541. Okay. So we're, we'll call it 500 active listings let's go back and look cassie at 2000 i can't remember what it goes back to 2018 Good. 2015 16 or 15 mm -hmm. okay how many active listings were on the market january of 2016 3033 3033 mm -hmm. okay so 1200 were in a seller's market still because 2016 was a good market but it was still it was about as balanced as you could get um, and we have 1200 right now. So a little over a third of what that was, mm -hmm. right? Again, if you would have told us in 2016 <laughs> that right now in 2023, that we're going to have 1200 active listings, we would have been like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that is going to be a crazy time, which really we're tripled from where we were at our lowest point now. So it doesn't feel for those of us that have been in it the past two years and been active with buyers and sellers right now, it feels like a balanced market. Would anybody disagree with that? I agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. feels pretty bad. It feels like both parties have pretty much equal power. Mm -hmm. Buyers can negotiate down a little bit. The sellers still have the option that we're still getting a lot of viewings. There's still a lot of stuff selling, right? So we're, the feeling right now is as balanced as we can get. However, on paper, we are still very much in a strong seller's market, statistically speaking. Now, it would be interesting to see, and we may have this on here, what percentage on a monthly basis we've gone up as far as active listings go, because I think it's gone up pretty quickly. Um, now we're about to get into the springtime market where we're going to have more buyers coming in. People are getting settled with interest rates, which we'll get into later. Um, and I guess I should ask that from my perspective, buyers are seeming to be more okay with the higher interest rates compared to what they were eight months ago. Does that everybody feel that same way or has anybody seen anything differently? I know we still have pushback, don't get me wrong, but people are saying, okay, it is what it is, especially with people saying that in the next two years that our interest rates are going to go back down and we can just buy, the, what is it, date, date the rate, buy the house or something like that? Marry the house and date the rate. Okay, cool. Weddings are expensive. <laughs> um, okay, so average number of days on home which will directly affect, all of this is going to correlate, right? Average days on market means that houses are going to sit longer. When houses sit longer, stuff gets listed, it piles on, and we're adding up. So we're going this way, correct? Yes? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Verbal's good. Um, so what is our average days of a home that stays on the market? Anybody have that statistic pulled up? It should be on Mike, Mike Brown's post. You guys should pull Mike Brown's Facebook up and keep it up for the next hour and a half. <laughs> what is it you're Days on market. Uh, yeah, he's your best friend. What? <laughs> he's my friend. I can't find him. You are in yeah, no, I, I'm on his educational research. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. And there should be two posts back to back that would happen like five posts down. I just, I was preparing like five minutes before this. So I know they're there. They're there. Okay. Now, what was your question, Trey? I'm sorry. What is it? What's the number? How many days on? What's our average days on market right now? Okay, we're going to blow through it. It's 30. We decided that earlier. <laughs> average price of a home in your market sells for what? What's our average price point right now? I know that's on Mike's as well. Is it 265 now? 265? Does that sound right? Okay. So. Anybody know what it was last year? 270? No, it was like 245, wasn't it? 245 last year? So. At this time? 
265 is what it was. 246 is what it was in December last year. It was 227. The highest that it got up to was 273, and that was the middle of this year. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, 273. That's in the middle. That's July. The current is what? Peak time, Sadia. What is the current? 260, 246. 246 was December of 2022. So we don't have the report for January this year, obviously, yet. However, the average last year was 265. So you can see where we ended. We're 20 grand less than what the average was for the whole year last year. The highest was 273, average was 265. Now we're at 246. So we're we are coming down. I don't know that we're necessarily losing value because the average is the same thing two years ago, which was the average was, and so this is 2021, the average was 230. The highest that it got up to was 265 and that was in June. We ended at 227. So we've actually gone up by 20 grand from two Decembers ago to this past December. So it still went up. Obviously the market last year, at the beginning of the year was still very much a seller's market. And everything was still multiple offers, even though interest rates had gone up. We still had so many buyers that had their interest rate locked in that we were still safe and we we're still selling things like crazy, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. There we go. I know my head's not rattling. Sorry. Nope, you're good. Um, so based on the inventory that we have now, what kind of market are we in? Buyers, balanced, or sellers? Sellers according to the numbers. How does it feel? It's kind of balanced. It feels balanced. Okay. It feels balanced. We're technically in a seller's market. Last week, we negotiated a contract down by 20 grand. This week, we actually just yesterday negotiated a, a list price down by 40 grand. It feels like we have more power. Not everything's like that though, right? I mean, we still have listings selling for full price. So I think you're 100% correct. So to the question of how do we explain this to our people, this is going to sound confusing, right? We're in a seller's market, but it feels like a buyer's market. And so we're technically in a balanced market, but who the heck knows, right? That's how we're, if we're asking the question of how do we explain that to our clients, exactly like that. And this sets expectations really well is what I found. I don't know if you guys have found this either. If you explain it to them, we don't know. What, how fast are our home going to sell? I don't know. Will it sell? It'll sell. I don't know how long it's going to take. What's it going to sell for? I don't know. I'm partially joking here, okay? I'm partially joking, so let's lighten up a little bit. <laughs> we don't know where the heck we're at. They don't know where we're at. But if they don't know where you're at, you can talk about the statistics. You're going to sound like you know where we're at. And that's all we can give them. What's the average days on market in their neighborhood? What's the average days on market for all of Springfield? What's the average days on market for their street, right? We have these listings that pop up and there's been 10 of them that have sold in the past year. What's the average days on market for that? Tell them, and here's a, a great way to explain price and setting expectations for this. These six houses sold six months ago or 12 months ago for X amount of dollars, X amount price per square foot, and they sold in seven days. You can see that these six houses sold in the past two months and they sat on the market for 32 days and their average price per square foot was X, okay? When you paint the picture for them and you, and you are the expert in knowing the stats and relaying those stats, they're gonna understand. Our, one of our big issues right now is sellers still think we're in 2020 and we can price our house for whatever we have. I can't remember who said that, but somebody said that, yeah. Monopoly money is what I joke. Monopoly money, okay, I love it. Yeah. We're not there anymore. They understand facts, right? The human brain, we understand numbers. We're not a computer, but we understand numbers. If we can see it logically, that's great. Everybody probably that's listed a house ever has heard, well, I've got a really cool butcher block countertop. My house is easily worth $15,000 more, right? Or I've got this cool reading nook. Or I hung the pasty stars on the ceiling that glow at night in my kid's room. Parents are going to want this house for five grand more because it's got the pasty glowy stars. It doesn't work like that. When we show them facts, when we show them the numbers that we're going to continue to go over today, 
they can paint the story for themselves. We don't have to go in and argue with them and pull hair and teeth and whatever else to get them to come down to a lower price. When we show them exactly what's going on and we show them X amount of houses are coming on the market a week. We have two houses that we're competing with this week. They both got listed. So now we're, we're one of three. Next week, on average, we're going to have three more get listed. So next week, one of them is going to sell. The other five are going to sit there. What's going to happen the week after that? Three more are going to get listed, right? Statistically speaking. So now we're going to be competing with nine houses in three weeks versus three houses this week. Don't you want to be the lowest price house and sell your house now? Or do you want to compete with nine later on, right? The picture is going to paint itself for them when we show them the statistics. And do we want to sit on the market for what is increasing on a weekly basis? Our days on market goes up. It's been doing that for the past eight months or whatever it's been. Um, we can continue to compete with people or we can sell this thing now. And then it's up to your sellers. But once you paint that picture for them, they're going to get it. Okay. Can't remember who said it. Was this you that said talk about lenders? Yeah. Okay. Number two, interest rates and lenders. Who's the bet? Who's got the best rate? Anybody have? Any lenders that send them emails on a weekly basis? Okay. What are what are they at right now? Have you guys checked 5. them? 5.999 is Great Southern. Yeah, Great Southern. Okay. Okay. Like okay. Every week email you can get on. Is that for a 30-year conventional? 30-year mm -hmm. conventional. Okay. I just had a lender that sent out an email that said rates below 5%. He very quickly sent an email back saying that was not correct. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that it's correct when your lenders send your emails. Guys, if you connect with lenders, you can go. If you don't, anybody not have a lender sending them emails right now? Okay. Go connect with a lender. Go find whoever. You do too. Okay. Go talk to lenders. Go call them and say, I want to be on your weekly emails. And they're going to say, heck yeah. Just like if somebody called us and said, hey, I want you to send me a monthly report on my neighbor because I want to sell a house. That's what we're doing with them. We're, con we're connecting with these lenders. Great Southern's great. We use Great Southern for all of our commercial stuff. Um, I know that doesn't help us here. The residential stuff, I use Derek Cheney um, and Nathan Strobel are my two guys. Okay, Nathan, are they with? Nathan's with Guild. Um, Guild Mortgage just opened up an office and Nathan is running that. Derek Cheney is with Mid Missouri Bank. Um, we've got Sarah Appleby with USA Mortgage, who's done a lot with the coaching program. Sarah's awesome. Get her, get on her list. Um, and if you guys that don't have lenders right now that are emailing you, anybody around here, get Sarah's information back there. Sarah's great. Casey Cooper, USA Mortgage. Um, Bobby Otwell's with USA Mortgage. He does a lot of stuff out east as well. There's all of them are going to be very comparable. Right. If we go and look at each rate that were sent by a lender, they're all going to be pretty similar. The biggest thing here is get out and talk to them. Um, there's going to be a different lender for everyone. Right. So my lender that I connect with might be different than the lender that you would really form a good relationship with. What we're after here is that relationship. Interest rate is important because it saves us money. But in the grand scheme of things, 0.001% off of an interest rate is going to save us about two cents a month, right? The relation, and this is my opinion. You're going to hear this from, you can get several different opinions here. Interest rate's important. For me, it's about the relationship. Go out and network with these lenders and find the person that you can have the closest relationship with because A, you're going to get the best rate. You're going to hear about all the deals when they come out first. Um, B, when it comes to the service for your clients, anybody ever work with like a rocket mortgage or whatever they used to be called? Mm -hmm. Can't remember. Okay. They do a lot of loans. They're a big business. They make a lot of money. You are a number on the desk, right? For anybody that's worked with them, you are a number on a desk. You are not a name. You are not a face. If you have that relationship with your lender and you call and say, Hey, Bobby Joe is in a bad spot. We've got to get the appraisal done. We've got to get whatever it is done in two days. And we need you to get this done. You're going to have a much better chance of getting that done. Okay. That's my side note for that. Interest rates and lenders. Get to know your lenders. Get to know on their, on their rate sheets. You guys go find lenders. Come tell me once we get done. I'll get you the lenders' names and info too. You can get set on that. Um, they send out weekly emails with the interest rate sheets. So you can see what an interest rate is going to be for a 30 year, what it's going to be for a 15 year, what it's going to be for FHA, what it's going to be for USDA, blah, 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 all of that. So this rate that Derek Cheney sent out for anybody that knows Derek Cheney, he was the one that said rates below five. They are not 30 year at 5% down right now is at a six. 
15 years at a 5.49. 5.49 is pretty darn good, but that's on a 15 year, so your payments are going to be pretty much doubled. Um, VA is at 6.125, USDA is at 6.125, FHA is at 6.125. So we're right there around six. We're not at the six and a half anymore, which is awesome. Um, get with the lender, get on their email sheet. I pulled that up in 30 seconds. That's how easy it is. So when you have a buyer or seller come to you and say, hey, what's the market looking like? You, you can tell them and you can keep track, right? We all have some sort of smartphone more than likely where you can go search your email on your phone. And you say, here's what it was a month ago. Here's the email that he sent me a month ago. Here's what he sent me today. Here's how it's changed. We can see how the market's changing based off of the interest rates because what has driven this shift that we are going into has been primarily interest rates, right? Anything else that you guys have seen that, is, that has helped us shift into more of a buyer's market or what feels like a buyer's market? It's primarily been interest rates, right? They've gone from 2.75% to 6%. And 6% is pretty darn good because it was at seven and a half just a few months ago. That's something that we need to be able to talk about. What are the interest rates so the buyer knows? Get your, anybody have a mortgage calculator on their phone? Okay, go get a mortgage calculator on your phone. It's the easiest thing in the whole world. You can type in purchase price, you can type in down, pay, down payment percentage, you type in interest rate and what is the amortization period. I actually got that out word, that word out pretty good. 30 years, and we can see what their payment's going to be. Then all we have to do is add in taxes and insurance. I use Carl's mortgage calculator, and you can get it on the app store, and it's super easy. Interest rates and lenders. Come on. Economic factors. So a lot of our shift that has been driven has been interest rates, obviously, which is influenced by economic factors. If you want a lesson on that, go ask somebody else, because I'm not going to be able to dive into this very well. Now, what have, what's, the, what's, what's the I word that has been thrown around for the past two years, past three years that has affected? Inflation. Inflation. What does that mean? Higher price. And services go. Oh, most services. How much are eggs now? $6. Yeah, so egg, I saw someone funny on Facebook that eggs are the new toilet paper <laughs> um, from the COVID times. So that was kind of funny. What are our economic factors? Now, what we're gonna get into here in a second is macro versus micro. And we might actually just get into that now because I think that's our next thing. Yeah, we're getting into that in a second. We're gonna talk about that now. So what's the difference between the word macro and the word micro? Macro big, micro little. Macro big, micro little. Okay, what would be an example of a macro real estate market versus a micro real estate market? Well, we could go global, or we could say the U.S. or macro. And okay. If you want to get to the micro, we're talking, I don't know, how, how far you want to go with Springfield or sure. even Spring Creek neighborhood. Okay. Or, or Valley Road. There you go. Right? It's all, it's all about perspective with macro versus micro, because the state of Missouri, the real estate market for the state of Missouri could seem macro, but then we talk about the world's real estate market, right? What we are going to talk about is our... The macro is what we're going to look at as far as the nation. Our micro is going to be Springfield. And then you can continue breaking it down to neighborhood, subdivision, street, whatever it's going to be, right? I can't, anybody, how long have you been licensed? Six years. Okay. Anybody been licensed like longer than 10? Have you? Okay. We won't. That's okay. <laughs> um, when you started, were they doing quadrant one, two, three, and four in Springfield stuff? Here. Okay, perfect. I have okay, long. cool. Then we won't go any further into that. <laughs> um, what they used to have Springfield broken down to is a is a quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. And then they went back, they changed it. This is before I got in the business, so bear with me for a second. But we're talking about the macro market of Springfield, right? What's our average price per square foot in Springfield? What's our average price per square foot in Brentwood? They're going to look different, correct? Mm -hmm. What's our average price per square foot in Grant Beach? going to look different, correct? So for our clientele and for you guys that are new, we're going to have niches. Everybody has niches in every industry, but very specifically in the real estate market, okay? Um, which brings me to another point. Does anybody have a buyer for a horse barn in Fairgrove? <laughs> yeah, if you do, let me know. Um, not everybody has a buyer for a horse barn, right? Not everybody has a seller for a horse barn. 
it's one thing that we have right now, which is a weird thing. Our niches have been first time home buyers. Okay. And it's specifically first time home buyers that I went to high school with or new people that went to high school with them. Um, so first three or four years of the business for me, it was very specifically the people that I was around. It was pe people that I played baseball with or people that I played golf with after college. Um, and we had those specific people that we knew how to talk to, right? They were buying a certain house in a certain area. So we need to be very, very specific with what those areas are. Okay. I'm going to use the example where my first house was in the Oak Grove area over off of East Sunshine. Um, great spot for first time home buyers and downsizers, right? We sold a lot of houses over there. And so we had to be very, very specific. Well, what are the facts? What are the houses on Plaza that have sold? What are the houses on Meadowview that have sold? What's the deal with the school over there? Are the schools good in that area? We might not know what this, the, the elementary schools in Joplin are doing. But we need to know what the elementary schools are doing in our neighborhoods that we are servicing on a regular basis. That is an example of a micro market that we need to be um, educated about. Everybody understand micro versus macro. OK, so economic factors go into macro and micro economic factors as well. What is happening on a national basis? Interest rates are going up. What's happening on our area that what are what are businesses that are bringing in jobs in our area? What, what are, well, who's our big employers? Amazon. 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 What else? That's Prime. Prime. That's Pro. How about our hospitals? Mm -hmm. That's the number one. Anybody work with a lot of nurses or doctors? Okay. That's a very micro market as well, right? They're looking for a specific thing. A lot of them are looking. That we, how many people did you have that came in that were looking for the, the short-term rental stuff? based off of people that you knew, right? It's a, it's, we're looking at the microeconomic factors for our area. We have the hospitals. That's the biggest employers in our area is, is Mercy and Cox, right? What's the, what's the second? Anybody want to take a stab at what our second is? School district. Okay. Universities. How about that as well? They're probably, I would guess they're probably pretty close to being tied, but that drives it a ton. Amazon, Bass Pro, Prime, SRC, whatever else is going to be in here. What's our what's our microeconomics? What's happening in our neighborhoods? What's happening in Springfield, in Republic, in Nixa, in Ozark, very specifically, so that we can talk about, talk to sellers. Hey, the real estate market in Willow right now sucks. The real estate market in Ozark's great. And I'm, I'm making this up here, bear with me. But Ozark just added a plant that's going to add 500 jobs. Well, or just lost a plan that's going to lose 500 jobs. We have to be able to talk about this stuff. Don't go take that to anybody because that's not true. Okay. We have to be able to talk to people to know about what's going on in our communities so that we can say, hey, this is a good area. This just got added. Big shots just got added. These values are going to go up. People are, they're going to start building around here. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. How about Galloway, for example? Galloway's grown a little bit in the past couple of years, right? How can we talk about what's going on with the businesses that are coming in, what's going on with the businesses that are leaving, that is going to drive how much money is in the area, one, two, how many people are going to be in the area. So would you say that we we need to specialize if we're talking this macro or, or micro, I guess, because mm -hmm. um, that's a lot of information. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a lot to know if everything's going on in Willard and everything that's going on in Republic and mm -hmm. everything that's going on in Ozark. Like, how do we yeah. get all of that information? Social media. Just looking. Right? I mean, that's yeah, I, I, I get it. I mean, I know I'm that generation, but I yeah. mean, it's all social media. We watch the five o'clock news every night, but yeah, I mean, it's it's watching the news. It's reading the articles on. It's on just Facebook. really paying attention. So just it's, pay. Yeah, it's yeah. just paying attention to what's going on. We just need to be able to talk about what's happening. Mm -hmm. We don't need to know everybody's names, right? Mm -hmm. We don't need to go that micro. Um, but by nature, we are going to have our niches. We're going to have our little areas. We're going to do things. like, And I'm not sitting here saying I'm only going to do things in East Springfield and I'll never go touch Willard because I actually really like Willard contrary to what I just said. Um, but we need to know what's going on in those areas. If we have a buyer and we don't know, we have a buyer that says, hey, I want to go buy a house in Buffalo. We need to know what's happening in Buffalo in order to help them the best. And so that's where we get to it. I'm going to, I'm going to use Joplin as an example. I don't go over to Joplin. I've got a referral agent in Joplin that I use. I don't know what's happening in Joplin, right? Mm -hmm. 
So if I have a buyer that wants to buy in Joplin, am, am I going to give them the best service in Joplin and know what's happening? Yeah. Probably not. Is it worth my time to go learn it all? Probably not, because we don't have buyers in Joplin on a regular basis, mm -hmm. right? So it's about learning your area, and that comes a little bit with each new client. So this will compound and snowball for you. As we have more clients, we're still learning about places in Springfield. I, this is home for me, and we're still learning about places in Springfield every day. As we have clients buying houses in different areas, we have to make ourselves the expert and go out and learn what is happening in those communities. Does that make sense? Okay. Other market factors. Um, we kind of got into this probably a little bit too much already. Shops and restaurants, health facilities, neighborhood attractions. Again, this is getting down in the micro. Be the expert of the area. Know what's happening. You don't have to know the names of the people that are doing everything, but know what businesses are going to come in. Know what businesses are going to be leaving um, and be able to talk about it. Because if we're going to put our clients in the best possible situation moving forward, um, we need to we, they need to know what's happening in their community so they can make a smart financial decision and investment for the future. Okay, ahas. I think we took way too long on that. I apologize. <laughs> um, what ahas do you guys have? I need at least three, so I'm going to call on people. If we don't raise our hands, and that's going to be uncomfortable. Well, for me, is to learn more about okay. to learn more about outside the real estate, not only real estate. But okay. What's going on in the area? Cool. Perfect. Okay. Some of the sources to plug into to get that information. Okay. Perfect. Feels like there's more than a month worth of inventory on the market. <laughs> it does. It does. Okay, we got one more. Uh, not really an aha, but I liked you sharing about the mortgage calculator. I was going to find that. Okay. I already yeah. downloaded it. Cool. Did you? Yeah. Carl, it's so easy. Carl. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So nice. Okay. Now we are in to build your expertise. So we are becoming the real estate expert of choice. Okay. So we've talked about a lot of this. We're going to learn our market. We're going to learn our clientele. We're going to listen to individuals and we are going to keep the headlines in context. So this is going to get specific into the shift, right? We're going to the shifting market. What do we expect? Especially for those of us that have not been through a downturn, right? Or even a buyer's market in general. Um, what are the headlines saying? What are the news stations saying right now? The market's crashing. Right? They're not saying everything's great. No, really? Huh, that's interesting. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're saying the market's crashing. What are they saying about interest rates? Interest rates are going up. The market's crashing. You missed your time to sell. It's a bad time to buy. Don't do anything, right? Mm -hmm. for, a, for a freshly married couple that can go pay $1,700 a month in rent, or they can go buy the same house for $1,500 a month, what makes more sense? Yeah. Buy, right? Assuming that they're not going to move in six months, if they're going to stay in the area, it makes more sense, right? Yeah. So, do you? To me, it just feels like we're going back to to like where we were pre-pandemic, right? Is that kind of what you feel like too? Yeah, no, okay. I do. I mean, it's our numbers are at twelve. What was it? Twelve fifty one is our active mm -hmm. listings. Our numbers in two thousand nineteen were. Um, 1800. I think it was right up to it yeah. dropped, it kept yeah. dropping. Yeah, and it was, I think, what we saw in, um, and it was this date in 2019, it was 1800, and um, 2018, it was 1900. And then we got up into 2000 and 2017, I think, is what it was. But we're still 500 listings short of 2019, even. Um, yes. I do. I feel like it's pre-pandemic. We sold it. I thought we were going to have to drop the price on this house by 20 grand. It was listed at 150 um, and it went under contract for $5,000 for the low list price. Now, it's also partially because I was freaking out on December 27th and forgot that it was Christmas and New Year's Eve and started panicking. I just did the same thing with my listing. I was like, we're going to have to drop it 10 grand. And then we got an offer for five grand less. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah. But. So grand scheme of things, um, Things are still selling, stuff sitting on the market, but there's still buyers out there. And in certain situations, I can't remember how many people said we've been in multiple offer situations in the past month. And there was there was also um, 
we had talked about percent to um, sold to list, mm -hmm. it, it was, it's still only like a percent down. So that's yeah. good. It seems like they're a lot higher, but I think the, the way too high ones are not selling. Anybody okay. who put their anybody who put their house for sale way too high yeah. has not moved. Go back, explain the statistic okay. that you're talking about. So there's a statistic, and let me find it. It's um, list price to sale price. Uh -huh. They call it something. Um, and so beforehand, we were getting 101, 102%. So okay. we we're actually Hold getting on. more. Because I want to explain this, because yeah. I love where you're going. List price, the ratio of list price to sales price. Okay. We are now in a time where houses do not sell for more than what we list them for. I know it's a crazy thing to grasp. <laughs> when I got into the business, it was like 96%. Okay. 96 and a half, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Say, so, when did you get into the business? So I got, I was part-time in 16, full-time yeah. in 18. Okay. Yeah. So we're right about the same time. Um, list price to sales price ratio is the ratio of if we list a house for $100,000 and it sells for $97,000, we have sold that house for 97% of what we listed it for. Does that make sense? Okay, keep going. Okay, so um, here it is right here. So last month for December, we sold at 98.41. Okay. So we got one and a half percent less than what we listed it for. And that's if you priced it correctly. Yeah. If you priced it incorrectly, it sold for 89% of list price. So almost 12% lower yeah. if it was priced incorrectly. Okay. So that, that's what we've been talking about is going under five to 7%. Yeah. So, so we're getting... Is that back to the initial price or to the reduced price? Um, it's one or more price changes. It's one or more price changes, and then it's, it sells for 89% of the total. Uh, of the so, original list price? Yeah, with the original list price. So if we originally listed for 100000 we sold it for 89.74. If we had to do a price drop on it. If we had to do a price drop. Okay, so there. don't do price drops, right? No, you can do a price drop. But price it correctly first, and you'll get more money. That's what that's what so we're that's, saying. Don't give yourself the do. Don't give yourself the chance to do a price drop. Right. Listen so that's correctly. you can show this one to them if they come in and you say it. I have comped it to two seventy five. But in the market that we're in, we have to create some competition, and we've got to create some buzz to get it. So the strategy is to list it five to seven percent below, mm -hmm. and then more people will come in, yeah. and then they're going to go. Well, two seventy five. Can I get three hundred? And if they talk you into it, you're going to lose 11% of what, yeah. So rather than 1% maybe off of a good price or 11% off a terrible price. And we're going to go back. The market's going to go back to us not taking listings because they're overpriced. Right. That's And that's where we were beforehand. Go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm already doing that um, on one deal. But so the way you're pricing houses now, are you, because as before we were using they like pass sold houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now it's active and pendings and depending on neighborhood or style of house or price range, mm -hmm. five, seven, 10% off the solds. I, I mean, you have to look at sold comps right. because that's what we're going to base our appraisal off of. Yeah. Right. right. So we have to keep that in mind. Um, I would prefer if the, if the active comp, active comps are more important than anything right now. Mm -hmm. Past two years, it was sold comps. Because that's where we started, right? Um, active comps are the most important thing right now because we have competition. Two years ago, we didn't have competition. We're listing houses. Now we have competition. And when we talk about competition, what is competition? Somebody want to explain what competition is? Other options out there. Okay, our buyers have other options. They don't have one house to choose from on a Saturday where they have to be in a house, right? We have other things that we can go look at. So yes, 100%, we, our main focus is our pricing strategy is based off of what our competition is priced at. And we want to be in the top two priced houses in that price bracket. There's another thing that we're going to have to go back to is pricing in a price bracket, right? And that price bracket shrinks. Um, we have buyer, we use it. Past two years, we'd have a buyer, hey, we're approved for 180. Okay, great. We're going to go look at 160s and we might find you something, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it used to be the way that we're going back to is our buyers are going to be pre-approved for 200, but they're going to want to spend 
160 to 180 mm -hmm. because of monthly payment, because of how much interest rates affect our monthly payment now, they're going to be looking from 160 to 180. They're going to know what kind of house they want. That's the price range, and that's the price range they can afford their monthly payment on, right? So if we're pricing a house, then we're looking at sold comps. We're saying, okay, this thing should, compared to the houses that have sold, we should price this house around 170. But we go look in that price price range of 150 to 200 even, and that's a big price bracket. I think it needs to be shrank down even more. But we see the houses priced between 160 and 180, and there's five other houses from 162 to 179, right? We've got to be top two in that price bracket in order for the buyers to consider us. Because if there is someone out there that is a better value and better condition than us, we are losing because so buyers have options. Top two as in bottom two prices. Bottom two. We've yeah. got to be the top two. Yeah, sorry. So the way I see that, <laughs> yeah. we've got to be the best price. The best, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that means the lowest price mm -hmm. for condition. We I, have to be there. And I also look at days on market in that same price bracket. So okay. you can kind of determine like how far out, like if you've got a house that's 60 days and it's $140 a square foot, uh -huh. then they're they're too high. Obviously we know they're too high if it's 60 days. So how do you, yeah. yeah. So this the script that I just came across the other day when presenting to sellers is it doesn't matter if that house has been on the market for 200 days or two days. These are the houses that are not selling. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's been on for two days, right. it hasn't sold. Mm -hmm. If our sellers are in the mindset of the past two years have been crazy, we can get whatever we want. Okay, these are the houses that haven't sold. These are yours, yeah. These aren't comps. Mm -hmm. These are not comps. Right. We are our own house. These are the houses that we are competing against, and none of them have sold. So why would we price it there? Right. Yeah. If we're serious about selling, mm -hmm. why would we price it? Where our competition is because our competition hasn't sold yeah so that's what i like to use there um okay so back to this four steps to building expertise learn your market we've talked about that learn your clientele we talked about that a little bit more specifically learning the areas of where your clientele is going to be buying and selling okay if we're experts in those areas we can talk educatedly about those areas one for somebody who's not our best friend or our mom, um, <laughs> we are going to have to compete, right? We have to sound educated. We have to know what we're talking about because there are still X amount of realtors out there. We still have plenty of competition. We've got to be the most educated. Learn where your clientele are. Learn who your clientele is, first and foremost. Learn where they are and then get familiar with those areas, right? We're listening to individuals. That's our lenders. That's our that's our economic experts that are talking about what's going on, um, what's happening in today's markets. This leads to the question. I can't remember who asked it, but this leads to the question of what's going to happen in the future. What's happening in the, in the real estate future? Um, the easiest way to handle that with a client that is talking about selling or buying right now is to totally dismiss it. And I know that sounds crazy, um, but what I like to say to buyers and sellers that are here and now are, guys, I'm sorry, I don't have a crystal ball, nope. right? And what are they going to say? Oh, yeah, I know. Well, just what's your best guess? I, honestly, it's a waste of time for me to know. even think about. I can educate myself on what's happening right now, or I can educate myself on what's going to happen in the future. And if I'm going to help you right now, I want to educate myself on what's happening right now. Okay, so here's the statistics. If you want to buy now, let's buy now. It's not a bad time yeah. to buy, right? Just like it's not a bad time to sell. Here's what's happening right now. And if you're serious about this, here's what we have to do. Um, so we're listening to individuals. We're figuring out what's happening right now. We're going to keep the headlines in context. We're not freaking out because Fox News or CNN are telling us that the world's going to hell and everything's crashing, right? Is it still a good time to sell? Absolutely. If that's the right move for you, it's different for everybody. Okay, so we're going to know our lore. We've already gone over this a little bit. Anybody know what lore stands for? Language of real estate. Good yes. job. It's almost like it was on the screen. I didn't read it, I promise. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Say the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Lang guys, language of real estate are numbers. That's all that this is. We're going to keep this very simple. How, what, what are our average days on market? What's our average sales price? If we're looking at, at neighborhoods, talking to sellers, what's our average square footage in that neighborhood? And what are things selling for price per square foot? Um, I think we're going to get into this a little bit more specific. 
here in a second. So we're learning our market. We've got to know our lore, language of real estate, what's happening, what are the statistics, is all that that is. Um, we're going to know our business. We're going to notice changes over time in your personal business. For those of you guys that are brand new, go look. You can pull this off of KW Connect. This is our multi-year trend. This gives you all the statistics for all the way back to where, when KW opened, not when they opened, but to 2010. And I'm sure you could probably go back further than that. This gives you statistics all the way back to 2010. Has there been any decent changes in the real estate market since 2010? Mm -hmm. so a couple, 2008, okay, right? Now, what's happening right now? Um, this, by knowing these numbers, this is gonna tell you average days on market. It's gonna tell you average sales price. It's gonna tell you how long, obviously days on market, how long are those houses sitting? It's what it's also going to do in this. I don't, I don't know that any really other brokers actually look at these, but they're available for everyone. Um, this is going to allow you to understand what's happening with the rest of the brokerages. So when we're talking to sellers, if we're interviewing for a listing, which believe it or not, we are going to have to do again, we are going to have to compete with other realtors. You can go on here and you down here and you can find what is KW doing against other brokerages, right? And if we're brand new and, and we haven't sold a house, we haven't listed a house, go tell them what, what has KW done on average versus other brokerages? That's your leg up, right? Everybody heard that? Mm -hmm. If you haven't done it before, use the whole brokerage numbers to compare to other brokerage numbers if we're competing against people. Um, this thing, this gives you so much information. I mean, it breaks it down, agent count for KW, blah, 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 blah. Listing sold, buyer sold, contracts written, average sales price, um, price per unit, price per agent in our market center. Go learn these because these are going to help you understand what everybody else is going through. We're all going through the same thing. Interest rates are all high. There's more houses on the market. Nobody's special in here. I'm sorry to tell you that. We're all dealing with the same issues. That's why I want to talk about what questions do we have because everybody's more than likely going to have the same questions. Okay. Where did you say you pulled that off of? This is KW Connect. You go on there and you go to the reports tab, go to multi-year trend. If you have any questions past that, go ask Landon because I don't know. He printed it off for me. Um, did we go through all of those? Yeah, we did. Okay, next, learn your clientele. Who are the buyers? Who are the sellers? Does the market benefit your clients? Does the market put your clients at risk? Guys, the most important question here is not, is it a good time to buy or sell? Is it a good time to buy or sell for you? Everybody has a different perspective. Everybody has a different situation. That's why when we hear about lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, we're not going to go ask the same five people every week if they want to buy or sell a house, right? <laughs> Let's go find the people that need to buy or sell a house. They are in the right position where it makes sense. It's not, it's not going to make sense for everybody. It's just not. The person who bought their house last year that paid $160,000 for it. We go list it today. We're going to list it for $155, maybe $150. It doesn't make sense for them to move. Let's go find the people that need to move. There's always going to be that. I can't, Justin Johnson, ask him what his five things are. It's death, divorce, marriage, kids, downsides, and I can't remember what all it is. There's always going to be people that have to buy or sell. Let's go find the people that we can help that it makes sense right now, right? Yes? Yes. There we go. Now we're moving. Listen to individuals. We're going to take a grassroots approach. We're going to learn where your sphere gets information, and we're going to be present. The last one is the most important. The other two are important. Um, but be present. Just be around your people. Be talking to them. That doesn't mean you have to call them. Like we said, every week, ask them if they want to buy or sell a house. Go find the groups. Networking is going to be incredibly important in the coming years. Um, and when I got into business, there was this idea that buying leads was stupid and you shouldn't do it because Zillow's coming to take all of our jobs. Is Zillow going away? No, no, it's not. The internet's not going away. Guys, buying leads is not bad. They're like they preached to us whenever we did. Um, go find those platforms that allow you to connect with people. We hear buy leads. We're like, oh, that's dumb. I don't want to spend money. That sucks. We're buying money for ourselves and our families by doing that because what we're doing is we are buying the connections, okay? That's what we're after. We're not buying a transaction. We are buying connections. We are buying relationships. That sounds horrible, actually. I hate the way that that just sounds. <laughs> um, 
The opportunity to yeah, build the opportunity for a relationship. Yes. We're buying the opportunity for a relationship. <laughs> and that relationship is going to be people that we can add to our sphere and we can add to our databases. They are also going to have friends and family and people that are moving on a yearly basis. Let's go build our database, right? Be present for that database. Once you have that in place, connect with them. Find your, like I said, hobbies. It's this is so easy to me, and why less people, why more people don't do this, it shocks me. Go, what do you like to do? Like, what are the things that you like? I got to an do? example of that. I play pool. I'm in multiple pool leagues. Okay, and that's my sphere. Yeah, I've sold probably two million dollars from just my league. People. Okay. Cool. Anybody like to ride horses? Anybody a horse person? <laughs> why, why are you asking? I was trying to sell my horse. Um, okay, but same thing. That, so that's that's the example, right? Beer league softball. Doesn't matter what it is. Go do something. Underwater underwater basket weaving. Find something that you like to do, and then go do it with other people, right? Bowling. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any of those things. For me, it's golf. Okay, go get as, as many golf leagues as you can get into. Go do whatever it is. Find what you like to do. This is crazy to me, but do things that you like to do. We talk about building a life by design. Figure out the things that you like to do and go do them with other people, right? Be present. Keep the headlines and contacts. Read past the headline and know your numbers. Okay, if if CNN and Fox are telling us that the world's going to hell and the real estate market sucks and everybody should sell everything that they have and never buy again, what do the numbers say? How many tra how many transactions were there last month? That would be interesting to see because I know it did take a dip, but were there any transactions? Did anybody have any closings in December of 2022? Yeah. Oh my gosh, people are still buying houses. Okay. <laughs> the world's not going to hell in a handbasket, guys. It's fine. Let's go find the people that it makes sense for them to buy or sell a property. And then let's know our numbers so we can explain it to them and paint the picture that, hey, this is logical if it makes sense for you. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> ahas. What are our ahas from that? Know your numbers. Go oh, inside and out. Why should you know your numbers? So when someone's asking smart. about how the market is, you can actually tell them with confidence. Okay. Cool. You sound smart. Who said that? <laughs> Love it. Okay. Anybody else? Ahas. Find the people that need to move. Perfect. Love that. That's that is going to be the most important thing over the next two years, right? The past two years is like you could go walk down the street and three buyers would come and hit you in the head with a hammer. It's not going to be like that anymore. Are they still out there? Yeah, they're out there. We just got to work a little bit harder to go find them, and that's it. Correct. Okay. Utilize resources. Utilize the apps. I'm going to work my way through this. I'm not a technology guy, but we're going to work our way through this. I can explain it to the best of my ability. Um, anybody who has the KW app on their phone? Everybody, very good. Okay, what are the best? What are the best features on it? I hate it. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> okay, we'll get to the negatives maybe here in a second. What are the positives? Tell me something good. We want to be happy. I've gotten deals because of the app. How so? My uh, client would be. Okay, we have good. I don't know. Sorry, I yelled. A client was on. I shared my app. Yeah. And he was on there. He was just looking at commercial properties, and he accidentally sent me that a link to one that he wanted to look. He thought he was just saving it, and he actually <laughs> sent it to me saying, "I want to view this property." And I was like, "Cool, it works." So I called him up, and he wasn't looking at the commercial property. And then he, he was like, "Oh, I, I want to buy a house though." So I was like, "Cool." <laughs> Okay, so it works by accident. That's one way people mess up and make mistakes. Okay, what what else do you guys like? What helps you in your daily? Yeah, go ahead. Contacts in. I'm, like as soon as you talk to someone, you just pull up the app and put their information in instead of okay. on your phone. Okay, cool. Who else? I have an addition. Oh, who's this? Hi, Hi. I'm Crystal. Hey, Crystal. Hey. Get hey. Smile out of me. <laughs> what do you so, got? One of the things that I like about the app is that if one of my clients is looking outside of my MLS and it's kind of hard for me to find the details, I can go into that app and get those details and it makes it easier to reach out to the listing agent and make that connection. Very cool. Okay. That's awesome. Love that. Who else? 
Nobody? Okay, moving forward. When you said the KW app, were you talking about Kelly or the KW app? Uh, no, this is the command app is what they have up here. I don't know that Kelly's still around. Kelly's not around. It's okay, like, I didn't oh, think so. Then I don't help him. I hated Kelly, Kelly too. Yeah, Kelly was okay. terrible. We can, we can get on board. I don't we can get on board with 13 un, undone tasks. Okay, right now. yeah, no, we, we, we very much do not care. I have one more. Yeah. So in the top corner of like your app, so like if you're on a team or whatever, and you end up with a buyer from like one of the Facebook leads and it's throwing it into command, at the very top when you pull up that contact, if you hit the three little dots, it says download to your phone. That's one of the um, things. So like if my boss puts something into command, and he's like, hey, you need to contact this person. I can download it into my phone rather than going back and forth or pulling it up on the computer and manually typing it in. Um, and then, you know, multiple features of between my Google and my iPhone communicating with command will automatically put leads in for me. If I make a new contact, it sucks it right in. Very cool. Love it. Okay, command. We're talking about the same thing here. Guys, command is such an incredible tool that we have for free. Um, and this is one of the perks that we've got here is the technology. Kelly sucked, we can agree on that. However, they have done, I can't remember how many millions of dollars, but I think it's 200 plus million dollars that they've spent on, on designing these and creating these. Um, when I first started, I was at a different brokerage and we signed our contracts in person and then handed them to the front desk lady that then put them in a manila folder for us. And we got our corrections on the day of closing to go do whatever it is that we needed to do. Rob, did you have command when you started? Uh, no, 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 no. It's come a long way. Technology has come a long way sure. in the past eight years or whatever it's been. Um, Use command. If you haven't started in command, get into it. You can plug your contacts in there. You can have your list. You can send out the emails. You can do all that stuff. Um, if you want to know any more, call Brian Fisher because he is the master at command. Um, okay, get the KW app now. Has anybody not downloaded this? Okay, very good. And we're blowing through this. Um, okay, establish your business on social media. Social media, can we all agree social media is the best way to reach multiple people at one time? Yes. Yes. Is there a better resource out there to do that? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you guys have your like, what are you doing? Like you like 10 posts a day, you write five comments a day, and you send one direct message a day. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. You guys, blow this up. This plan right here, and you can ask Shanna about, about it because I'm, I'm in coaching with her as well on the tier three stuff. Um, what we did, and I'm going to give you the script here in a second, the direct messages are so potent when it comes to being able to connect with people. Um, obviously liking people's stuff, that's great. It's probably some of you kind of weird with people and like each other's posts back and forth a little bit and it gets off. Writing comments, engage with people because that allows other people to see you engaging, right? You connect with one person by writing a comment. How many other people see that you have commented on there? Right? So this is a great way to get here. Um, I'm gonna nerd out here a little bit and make sure that we don't need to go into anything like super serious, but I wanna give you guys this because this was awesome. Um, our That's one different from what's wrote on the- One post, five DMs, 10 likes. So uh, send one direct message a day, write this, five comments a day. I mean, which one? Yeah, the, I like this better. I like this yeah, better. Ten Design likes, your system. Here, at one time, likes. I can tell you this from experience, Facebook will let you send the same message to 63 people in 24 hours. No more. <laughs> cut you off. <laughs> I like this. 10 likes. And I probably would change this to 10 comments. I would do 20 likes. 10 comments, five DMs, and one post, okay? One post a day, seven posts a week is going to be enough to generate a bunch of interest. This is five contacts. I mean, we think about making our contacts on a daily basis. A Facebook message is a contact, right? That's a conversation, mm -hmm. just like a text message is. Use that. It's so easy. Um, I would do 20 likes a day, and I would do 10 comments a day. I would go on there and engage with 10 people is what we're doing. 
um, that allows X amount more people to see that you're engaging with this one person and your name's visible and your name's on there. Be on social media. If you're not, you're losing out a ton. Okay, one direct message. This is the one little golden nugget that I'm throwing in. Um, I sent this to my whole Facebook database because that is what it is, right? Um, I sent this to every friend on Facebook. This is a bold script. I did not come up with this, so do not accuse me for being this smart. What we said is, at the time, Ross, my brother, just got licensed and joined the team. We said, hey, hoping to connect with you. Ross, my brother, who you probably know, just got licensed and joined the home team. We are in a competition with another team in our office to see who can receive the most leads by the end of the week, and we're hoping to win. A lead, explain a lead to them, is anyone that might be interested in buying or selling a property or real estate in the next year? Who do you know that could be considered a lead for us? We're really hoping to win this competition. Um, uh, I think it was, it was 63 that you could send out in one day. Generally, we had 15 to 20 replies. So that's 15 to 20 contacts in one day, right? What is Bold? Bold says what, 20 contacts a day? Is that what we're yeah. supposed to be doing? Boom, you're done. If you call people, that's icing on the cake. Um, we received 80 leads from that of people wanting to buy or sell. The Of the 20 replies that we got, everybody was so excited to help us or so disappointed that they could not help us. Either way, they were excited to be a part of it and they were excited to engage. Um, we received 80 leads. A lot of those people are going to be a year to two years down the road. We have sold four houses in the past four months because of that Facebook message. And that went out to about 2000 people. It is so easy. It's time consuming because you can only send 63 a day. So if some of you psychos have like 10,000 friends, it's going to take you a while, <laughs> but it's worth it, right? It's totally worth it. And it's very easy to go alphabetically. A, B, C, D, all the way down. So where it's copy, paste, copy, paste. You don't even have to put their name in there. Just say, hey. Hey, you. Then, hey, you. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Tell them you're in a competition they need, and you need their help, and they're going to be thrilled to death to help you. If anybody actually does that, please tell me how your results go. It works, and it takes about 45 minutes a day. You go bang it out. You have people reply to you. You don't even have to reply as soon as they reply back. Go through, knock out your 63, and then go back and talk to them. You're going to have at least 10 contacts a day, probably more like 15 to 20. That's incredible. So social media, get on that, do this stuff. This is very, very powerful. Um, other enrichments, okay, we've got our 10 conversations. We've got our 10 contacts added. We've got our 10 handwritten notes. Is everybody in here doing this? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Do this. This is incredible. Well, the handwritten powerful. notes is not the five. Knocked, so it's five instead of ten. Yes, because of the amount we can only that we get have five stock. cards. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, it so me. <laughs> we're going through this. Um, the left, the, the left side of this, I do want to touch on this because this is something that we used to do that we don't do anymore because houses sold in two hours. Um, previewing homes, so we're getting back to what we're supposed to be talking about, which is knowing your market and connecting with your market. Um, go preview homes. Another plan that you can get if you're brand new and need help connecting to the market and understanding it, go knock out 45 minutes to an hour a day and go find three new listings that come up that are all vacant and go look at them on a daily basis. If you go look at three a day, you're going to see 15 houses in a week. If you're doing this Monday through Friday, go pick a specific price range in a specific area if you can. If not, you can do all of Springfield if we're still not having that many listings pop up um, and go learn what is the price range between 150 and 200 look like. You can knock out a lot of 15 houses, a lot of houses to knock out in one week, right? If you do that for a month, that's, what is that, 60 houses a month that you're going to look at, that's going to give you a lot of knowledge and a lot of understanding. So when somebody comes and says, hey, I think I want to buy a house and I want to be in the Oak Grove area. You can go list all five houses that are listed over there between 150 and 200, and you can talk about them, right? Then, right then and there, if they had any doubt who they were going to use as their buyer's agent, you are the expert in that area because you told them everything that was going on over there, right? Right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. Okay. Ahas. Uh -huh.
Okay, we're behind, so we're gonna blow by this. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the social media things you were talking about, folks group. That's script. I'm telling you, not probably one of you might do it in here. I'm so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I believe you. Don't lie to me. I'm gonna check in with everyone as well. Um, okay, so recap of knowing our market and building our expertise. We got to know the type of what type of market are we in, right? Are we a luxury market? No, we're not. Do we have luxury houses? Yeah, absolutely. We got luxury houses. What's our average price point compared to LA? Are we lower or higher than LA? Extremely lower. By a touch. Okay. I would love to have the transaction that we did last year in LA. Um, I probably would not be here. I would be on a beach somewhere. Um, so we've got to know our type of market, our inventory in that market, our interest rates and our lenders for right now. Remember, we are focused on right now, our economic factors. That's what's going to help us in the future, other market factors. And then we're going to build our expertise. We're going to learn the market. Go preview houses. I think this is something you guys are going to hear more of, but nobody's really talking about now. The biggest educational piece to understand what is out there is go preview houses it's not hard. You can go look at the vacant houses only. If, you, if that's all you're going to do, go look at the vacant houses and see what all is out there for sale. So you can talk about what is actively for sale. Um, anybody ever had a buyer that you go look at one house and they say, do you have anything else listed that we can go look at? Most of us say no, because we don't. Right, we've got one house listed at 250 and nothing else in that price range. If we know what else is on the market, we can talk about it. Versus saying, oh, I don't know, let me look at my phone. They can look at their phone, learn what's out there, and be able to talk about it. Um, learn the clientele. Learn who your niche is. Go outside of that niche and add more people, but learn who, who your niche is and really, really dive into that. Listen to individuals. Keep the headlines in context. Okay, ahas to achievements. This is going back over the whole thing. How has your thinking changed? What ideas or new mindsets do you have? Hopefully diving into the data a lot or just knowing it through and through. Okay, cool. How is that going to help you? Because then whenever I go to go talk to somebody, I can actually give them answers instead of having to go find it. Cool. We'll have that delay and frankly, they'll trust you more. Okay, perfect. Who else? How has your thinking changed? What do you feel differently about? Anybody? I don't know why, but I, I, I feel really challenged by your 20 likes and 10 comments. I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do it. I don't know why. It's easy. Yeah. It's easy to do one day. Mm -hmm. Are you going to keep doing it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, all I'm doing is lead generation. So, I mean, I need to, I mean, that's lead generation. So I just have to put it into my schedule. You ain't got nothing going on. Right. What else do you got? Yeah, I don't have a hundred percent. And here's where I would change that is that direct message that we talked about. This is lead generation. Right. If that's, hey, who do you know that's looking to sell, right? Our script of we're in a competition. That's the most important thing. Right. You're in a competition right. with that script. If you're saying, hey, where's your leads? Who do you know? Right. Who can I help? That is lead generation. Mm -hmm. Your posts and your likes, right? And your comments, mm -hmm. that is SOI. Okay. That is relationship harboring. That's relationship building. Go so, but it's, so it's not, it's follow-up rather than... I wouldn't even call it follow-up. No, so okay. I would call it Just, even database management would be a better okay. term for it for me because what we're doing is we are um, fostering relationships, right? How many people on social media do you see post on a regular basis, but you never comment on, mm -hmm. right? If you were to go comment, they would comment back. How many of those people, I mean, they should pop up in your mind, right? right. Go comment, yeah. go comment on their stuff. That's it. You'll be very surprised once you start commenting on people's stuff. How many people will message you and say, hey, I've been thinking about buying or selling, mm -hmm. you know, just FYI, if you come across anything good. Um, so that's relationship building for me is the comments, the likes, and the posts okay. is getting people to know you and understand you. The DMs of, hey, who do you know that's looking to buy or sell? That's lead generation. Okay. So two different things, but that lead generation is so easy to do, mm -hmm. to go fire off 60 messages. And here's the thing. If on a good day, 20 is going to respond. Mm -hmm. One out of three is going to respond. That would be a great day. You still have 40 people that saw the message, mm -hmm. right? So you're still contacting people. I, I don't consider that lead generation 
as far as contacts, like that's not a contact for lead generation just by sending the message. Mm -hmm. Contact has to be a conversation, right. Right. right? Yeah. Okay, any other ahas? How are your behaviors are gonna, what are you guys gonna do differently other than this, right? Anything else, what are you guys gonna do differently on a daily basis or a weekly basis to help you move your business forward? Mature homes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, previewing houses. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Anybody else gonna do that? Good. What else? Anything else you guys can think of? If I can get open houses. Okay. Yeah. Can we actually do that? Figure out your legion sources. I know this isn't, we're not talking about connecting your market stuff right now. Figure out your legion source. That's what Shannon and I meet on Wednesday mornings. And that's what we did this morning is we sat down and we looked at what are our legion sources? What do we need? Is there anything that we need to add? Is there anything that we need to cut out? What pieces need to be picked up? Figure out your legion sources and go work on it. You don't need to have 20, you know? Uh -uh. We've got four, and I'm not keeping up with four. I mean, you can get one and just smash that one. If you have one good lead gen source, that's all you need. And social media can be that for people. Will you share your four? Uh, social media, which is SOI. Um, I signed up for 72 sold. We've got our other website that generates leads. Um, golden letters. We started doing golden letters. So does everybody know what golden letters are? Anybody no. not know what golden letters are? Okay. Literally the, the letter is, hey, would you like to sell your house to a client of mine? And that's all it says. We go and find neighborhoods and I can't remember who's got it. There's a couple of different ways. I think Land Voice, maybe there's a couple of different websites you can sign up for that will pull mailing lists for you. So we found one neighborhood that um, we sent out at first. It was. I don't know, 350 or 400 houses in this one neighborhood um, or area. There's a few different subdivisions mixed into one. And we hand wrote the owner's name on there and their address, hand wrote the return. So it's Trey Watson, 1619 East Independent Street. Um, on the letter itself, we handwrite their name, we handwrite the address, and then we hand sign it. And then we send that out. So that's a golden letter is just asking for a listing is all it is. Um, or asking for somebody to raise their hand and say, hey, yeah, I might want to sell my house. Um, we might have a client in that area. We have clients in that area, so we're knocking out two birds with one stone. There's a lot of people that go out and send these things out and don't actually have a buyer. The buyer could be them if it's the right price, right? And that's, so that's what I tell people. We've sent, out, we've sent out a round of them in the past month and have gotten four calls back. Pretty solid. Because, I mean, if, if those leads are worked correctly, those are going to work. I mean, that's going to be two or three sales a piece, right? If we can get referrals off of them as well. Um, so that's that's our our fourth one is golden letters. And we're kind of diving into that right now. And we've gotten some really good calls back from them. Um, nothing fruitful as far as listings go, but it's database contacts. So we've continued. I think we sent out about 2,000 letters in the past. We've sent out another 1,000 in the past two weeks. So that's you got to pay for that, right? You pay 57 cents for a stamp, you pay 15 cents for a color copy of the letter to print it out. You got to pay for the envelopes. Um, yeah, we hire that out. I pay somebody that's, <laughs> that's looking for extra work. Um, and I pay them 15 bucks an hour, and they've hammered out 2,000 of these things. So the ROI on it will look really, really good once it works out. And I'm, I'm really optimistic that it will work out because we just started this a month ago. Um, and that added that in. So, yeah. Your other two, I got social media and golden letters. 72 sold. It's a new program that generates leads. Um, and then we had somebody build our website that does SEO, we paid somebody to do that as well. So, um, so those are our four there. Okay. What else you guys, what other questions? Aha's uh over the whole day today. We're going to blow through the last little bit so we can get to. Go ahead, Rob. I saw commercials just this week starting for 72 sold. Yep. Local. Do you see them? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. So it's a national thing. It's cool. Right. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but. Yeah, I just noticed it this week. Starting mm -hmm. Monday, I think. I've heard all the, it's already sold out in our area. I think it is, or it's dangerously close to no, being sold out. It there's, yeah, there's a, said yesterday. there's a finite amount of seats that people can get in it. And so once it's sold out, it's sold yeah, out. Five percent. Yeah. KW agents. Yes. Yeah. And so it, it was very specific for KW agents. Right. And Gary Keller worked some deal with them that yeah. they had to offer it to us first. Once so they're gone. They're gone. Yeah, that's correct. So we'll see. We signed one listing on it. 
Um, the first lead we got, we signed the listing on it. It's an $85,000 house in Grant Beach. Um, so the ROI on that's not looking great right now, but I'm excited to see if it works. We've gotten three or four more leads that haven't panned out, but horse barns, solid. Do what? Horse barns? No horse barns <laughs> and no buyers for horse barns. So we'll see. Somebody else raise your hand. Did you have your hand raised? Okay, go ahead. I have a question for you, like social media messenger. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to work, well, my sphere is not that great because most of the people I know is not from here, from Missouri. Okay. I like to work more local. Okay. But I message random people. What would be a great script for people that you don't know? Um, I would just try to connect with them, honestly. So I don't, and everybody's different. A lot of people would have no problem firing off 2,000 messages of people that they don't know saying, hey, hi. I'm Trey, you want to connect. Um, if I did that, people would be like, probably don't ever, they'd probably block me and say, don't talk to me ever again, right? Um, for me, it's just reaching out and saying, hey, be up front with them. Hey, I know we don't know each other, right? But I'm looking to connect with more people in our area um, and wanted to see if you would like to grab coffee. Okay. Very, I mean, invite them to coffee, something easy. Say, hey, I'm just looking to connect with people. Um, what I would also say there is I don't like the brand new never talk to, have no idea who they are. They don't know who I am. Contacts, right? Um, build your database. Build your social media based off of things that you're doing. So what we talked about earlier, um, find what you like to do. What are your hobbies? What's one, one hobby that you would say that you have? Could be literally anything. I like to work out. You like to work out? Mm -hmm. Easy. How many gyms do you belong to? Just one. Okay. How often do you two, go? They have two places. Okay. How many, how many times are you there? Six times a week. Okay. Perfect. Are you there at the busiest time of day? No. <laughs> are you there at the least busy time of day? Yes. Change that. <laughs> do exactly what you're doing except difference. Okay. Um, like I said, golf course for me, right? I like to be at the golf course. I would go at the busiest time. I would go to men's league on Thursday night. I would go to couple league on Friday. Um, we would have tournaments on the weekends and submerge yourself into that group and really build those relationships with those people, right? Um, Jason Massengale said one time, you can go try and meet a hundred new people a week, or you can pour into 10 people a week. You're going to get the same amount of business. Right? Because those 10 people are, that know you and trust you are going to refer everybody to you. Okay? Those 100 new people, you're going to have less people that are going to use you because they don't know and trust you. So go find something that you love to do that you're going to do anyway, regardless, and then just go do it with people and go do it with the most amount of people that you can do it with. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Who else? Go ahead, Rob. It was just a comment. I know last month when I was at Quantum Leap in Kansas City, Ed Gene had said when he joined a, a workout, a gym, uh -huh. the most important thing was going there when it was absolutely packed. Yeah. All the time. He said, why wouldn't you? It's a waste of a work. I mean, it's, it's a waste of time. If we're using it as something, now you've got to specify. So part of, and I'm going to use my example, and Rachel can confirm this as well, um, part of my golfing is I want to go play by myself sometimes, right? I want to go do this, but it's easy for me to justify getting a membership because it's lead generation. It's connections. It's not connections and lead generation. If I go play, my, play by myself five days a week and then don't go the other two days, right? So if we're going to use it, figure out if working and working out is one of those hard ones. Is working out something that you're doing because you want to block the whole world out? Or are you okay with going and doing it with the rest of the world? It's kind of blocking the world. Okay. <laughs> so do both. Really focus. It's hard for me to, you know, talk to someone, work out at the same time. And okay. It's difficult. Could you do both? I can. Yeah. Could you go at the least yeah. crowded time and work out just for you and then go at the most crowded time? Yes. And kind yes. of... I mean, I don't know, go walk a couple laps and then go talk to people. Yeah. Act like that's what I do when I'm actually working out is I act like I'm working out. I'm really not. I drink a lot of water. Well, you could even take it to, um, you were asking initially about social media, right? And how to yes. get these connections. Mm -hmm. We'll look for the, get names maybe at the gym or whatever, but, but you can also, there's so many people out there that want to share information of how to tone your, your 
left tricep to, you know, like, and they get super specific and there's this whole culture of people out on social media and you could dive into those groups where you could do that outside of it, get some ideas maybe that you can incorporate into your world, but you're blocking everybody out, but still build yeah. a connection. I mean, and like you said, social, okay, so social media, we'll tie this all back together. Mm -hmm. We go build these relationships of people with the gym and then we add them on social media and then we keep in touch with them, right? And we're building relationships through that. All of my, it, Rachel makes fun of me because if you go look at all my social media pages, everybody has their tailored to what they're like, right? Every other post is like a golf post and then it's a duck hunting post and it's a golf post, then it's a house post. And his golf duck hunting house and it just rotates. He's like, you're such a dorky dude. But it is, I mean, that's who that's the people that I connect with. Mm -hmm. Right. So figure out who your clientele is mm -hmm. and then go immerse yourself in that population and that community. Mm -hmm. And be the person in that community. It's also easy to pick you go to the gym, what did you say, six days a week, yeah. right? So you probably run circles around me in the gym. Go get around people like me that are not that great at working out that would see you as an expert in working out. Oh, you're also in real estate. I'm not an expert in real estate either. So you must be an expert in real estate, mm -hmm. right? Find something you're good at and you like doing and then go do that with other people. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay, what else? Okay. Who is this? Don't call people that are on the do not call list. If you got lists, if you're going to find those lists of people, make sure that you're scrubbing it and you don't call them because you will get hit with a hefty fine. I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution and people are happy to be in relationship with me. Okay, so if we're at the gym working out, sorry, I'm going to pick on you since you spoke up. <laughs> we're at the, gate, we're, we're at the, at the gym and we're engaging with other people. We're talking to other people. How can you help those people like me that worked out really hard and then we got married and then we kind of the past few months have not, not real great at working out? How can you engage with those people and help those people in that specific asset? What did Gene say about you got to create your own special club? You remember him talking about the special club? He talks about we've got Trey's Club is what I'm going to call it. It sounds very dorky now that I say it out loud. We have Trey's special club. If you're in my club, I'm looking out for you. I'm helping you. I'm adding value to your life, right? Otherwise, there's no reason to be in Trey's club. If Trey adds no value, people aren't going to want to be around Trey. Find the areas where you can add value. Real estate, real estate's an easy one, right? We're in this on a daily basis. We're learning, even if we just got into it, you know more than 95% of the population, correct? You're automatically an expert there. Come from contribution. Give those market, market statistics, right? Part of knowing these things is so you can tell them to people. Share them on social media. Show people that you are an expert here and you will give out free information and people want to work with people that give out free information, right? Add value in real estate, add value in the gym, add value wherever else it is, your hobbies. That's why I say find something you're good at and you like doing so you can be an expert in it and add value there. And then you can also add value through real estate, correct? Okay. Role play. So here's what we're gonna do real quick because we got 15 minutes. We're gonna blow through this. Um, I want you guys to role play. And then after that, we will be here to do our contacts. I want you to get a partner, no groups of four, like you guys did cheating in the back. <laughs> and we are going to have the conversation of what does, why are we going to sell now when the market is crashing and burning? Okay. So partner up. This should be a two minute conversation. It should not take long. And then flip flop and do it the other way. One person is going to be the seller. One person is going to be the agent. The seller asks the question. I want you to say it out loud. Why should I sell right now when the market is crashing? Okay. <laughs> Have that conversation and then flip flop and do it the other way. And the other person has to give a different reason than you gave. There's a lot of different reasons. 
Okay. <laughs> Go. Right. Two minutes. Okay. You were a good three, right? So, yeah, we were. Okay. 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 I'm not going to allow you to be my partner. Sweet. I was in a group of three, too. Change it up. Are you going to be my partner? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a great way to make it a how did you hear the So that's going to kind of finish up. I'm not going to sit here and harp on you on your contacts. Um, you guys need to understand that those contacts are important. You guys understand how to go get them. Okay. So I want to go over. We got about 15 minutes. We asked our questions at the beginning of the class. I want to know what of those questions did not get answered or who had an answer, how, who had their question answered that was just totally mind-blowing, mind-changing, life-changing. Give me, give me some responses on how your questions were answered and let me know if any questions were not answered. I'll follow the CMA. What would be the best way to the CMA in this new market? So CMA, in my mind, where we were taking, um, two years ago, we were only taking sold comps. At least I was. I was taking sold comps so I could say, hey, here, this one sold for the highest price per square foot. This is where we're going to list it at. And it was that easy. Okay. Now we're taking sold comps because we need to explain the appraisal process. That's what the sold comps do. They are not good for anything else. They explain the appraisal process and help us get through that conversation. Hey, here's what an appraiser is going to look at. 
they're not going to let our house sell for much more than this. So we have to be very close to this, right? Mm -hmm. What we're also doing is we're also taking the active comps. And that is the most important is we are explaining here, this is our competition and these are the listings that have not sold. And that's gonna be, that's my biggest takeaway from the past couple of weeks is these are the listings that have not sold. We have to be priced better than these, okay? So for me, I'm pretty, I'm pretty simple when it comes to CMAs. I literally just print them off the MLS. I don't do the report. I don't do any of that. Part of this is also knowing the statistics in that area. So you can explain that to them. As I say, here's the sold comps. Here's where we have to be priced at. Nothing's selling over this, okay? Because we're declining. Here's the active comps. Here's our competition. These are the four closest com competitors to us. We have to beat all four of these people, right? And then it's, it's as simple as that. And I know it sounds super simple and it is super simple. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. The CMAs, everybody's got their different style. There's not a right or wrong here. The CMAs that have 45 pages of statistics in there are confusing. That might also be my brain. Okay, I'm a little slower than most. I like simple. Here's what's sold. Here's what hasn't sold. This is how we need to price it. We need to beat everybody else on pricing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm happy to sit down and show it to you more in depth. There's not much more to show. It's that simple. Okay. Thank you. Do you have something? Okay, cool. What, uh, who else, who had a question that didn't get answered today? Okay. Nobody? You want me to share one that you did answer? Sure. Anything yeah. other than you hate Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that we had the candidates in the end. So that was, I guess that's no, like, no, no, uh -huh. I, I know I, I didn't like Kelly I'm either. So excited. Is that is that your answer? No. Okay. No, that's not what I, um, so we we had asked, uh, our group had asked what you what your response was, what you said, you know, um you, you got these people that are anxious and they want to know what's gonna happen in the future. Mm -hmm. And I look I I feel like that's the question I get asked more often than any other question. Oh, you're in real estate. Well, what do you think is gonna happen in the next mm -hmm. six months? And you answered it mm -hmm. by saying. Crystal ball, I use it every yeah, time. Yeah, crystal ball is easy. If I had a crystal ball, I would have bought a ton of homes in Republic. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Brazil, um, yeah. Well, but I like the way you took it. You said, Amazon here, came in. here's what I do know about today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, give them everything you have. And that's, I mean, I don't know. I'll make my speculations. I like to gamble. I'll tell you what I think is going to happen. More than likely, it's going to be wrong because it usually is. However, <laughs> yeah, you know, I think the next couple of years, we're going to see interest rates probably stabilize. Year two or year three, I think we're going to see them come down. I don't know that to be a fact. That doesn't help us at all right now. However, what I do know right now is in your area, there are six homes for sale, and the average price per square foot is $146 per square foot. Those houses aren't selling, so I think you need to list your house a little bit lower. I guess I was talking more like a casual conversation. Somebody, yeah. you, somebody knows, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. when, once people know you're a real estate agent, mm -hmm. they just ask. And that's a casual conversation yeah. right there, 100%. Yeah. Go have that casual conversation with everybody that you can have. Mm -hmm. Go do it at the gym. Just do it at a different time. Go to the busy times. <laughs> Go teach a class. Yeah. Go do something like that, you know? Yeah. Cool. Okay. What else? <clears throat> Jana, what's the most common question that you are being asked right now? Oh my gosh. Did you call on me because I sneezed? Is that why? <laughs> yes, you interrupted our class and it was rude, so now you have to call. <laughs> the most question? I mean, it's all of these questions. <coughs> these. Like, tell me what's going to happen. Okay. You know, what's my house worth? Uh, <coughs> yeah. How do I make $100 million? <laughs> I wish we had the answer to that one. We do. Actually, I take that back. We have that recipe, right? Does anybody know where that recipe's at? In the red book. It sure is. I saw <laughs> Nicole has the red book on her desk, but it's some like horror novel. It's actually it's called, called, it's called The Red Book. Yeah. It's kind of oh. funny. Okay, cool. Where do you guys, where are you guys? Tell me your hobbies. Where's your lead generation sources? What are you guys doing right now to go out and find the motivated, like we talked about? Go ahead. Uh, my kids play basketball, volleyball, so um, I've had many deals with the parents and the sphere with that, and I have banners up in the gym. 
Very good. Are you screaming at the refs? No, I have to keep my cool because really? my banner's up there. Got it. You <laughs> well, I haven't done this, but I had um, a couple parents do water bottles branded, and uh -huh. they would always supply the water bottles for the kids at the end of the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. How many of you guys know, for those of you that are parents, no kids that are about to graduate high school? Anybody? Anybody not necessarily just friends with them? I know my parents' friends that have kids that are about to graduate high school. Anybody know that group of people that is about to have kids graduate high school? It's another Gene, Gene Rivers thing. Yeah. I'm in it. What are you, you going to do once you have no kids in the house? Are you going to keep your 5,000 square foot mansion? Size. Oh, really? So you're going to move? Go talk to those people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys with kids, that's so easy. Go get involved. Go do that kind of stuff. What else? What other, what other communities are we involved in? I started playing pickleball. Boom. That's cake. We are talking, Carrie Prater was here earlier. We were talking about that. <laughs> I saw him yep. last week. Yeah. What about this side of the room? Somebody tell me something that they're involved in. You guys aren't talking. Anybody? Pavilion and sleep. Okay, you talked already. No, you don't get to talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you said we talked to you about that afterwards. I volunteer at Rescue One. Okay. Who else? What do you guys do? What do you guys do for fun? Car meets. Huh? Car meets. True. I can't understand. Car, car meets. I, car meets. Oh my gosh. That's an incredible one. You people got have expensive cars. You guys got money. Right, we we go buy money old, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, you spend it all on money. We spend it all on duck hunting, so I get it. Dog breeding, dog breeding. What kind of dogs? Anything, Crescent Canarios, Pitbulls, Bullies. Um, That's a niche market. Yeah, got a bully. How many? So, you do like, are you doing multiple dogs? Like, you have multiple litters? I have a litter now. That's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's cool. So we a few years I had a lab that passed away last year that was my duck hunting dog. But I trained him myself, got involved in all those communities. That's a niche market, right? The dog community is a very, very niche market. Plus, everybody loves seeing cute floofers on the internet, right? How easy of a post is that on social media? Yeah, go take a puppy to show a house with you. See how that face lights up. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, Albus would go with me. I have signs with Albus sitting next to my listing signs. I'd take him to all of the buyer's appointments. They'd say, oh, let me see him do some tricks. We'd go out there and we'd do some retrieves and we'd do hand signals and do all that stuff. That's an easy social media post. You got to leg up on everybody. Okay, so do we get where we're going here as far as digging into our communities? And digging into our spheres, right? The things that we like to do, those are the people that we're around. Okay. That's what is going to be so important is for you to connect with that group and grow that group. Continue to be involved in more of these hobbies and activities that you like doing and immerse yourself in it. You're already doing something fun. Go do it more. Give yourself permission to go do more fun stuff, right? Easy way to look at it. For some of us, it's, oh my gosh, I hate being social and I don't want to go talk to anybody. Go do something fun while you're doing it. It's that easy. Okay, questions. Any questions that weren't necessarily questions at the beginning that are now because I explained things horribly and now they're clear as mud. Okay, who's ready to call some people or send out a Facebook message? Right. She's already doing it. She's not even paying attention anymore. She's checked out. Okay. Guys, thank you for being so awesome. Um, if, you need, if you need anything, I'm going to give you my phone number. So get your phones out. It was good. I didn't know what to do. That was an awkward answer. Um, okay. If you don't have my number, get your phones out. Get whatever you need to write it down. You guys can call and text me at any time. It is 417. 773 We have an email. Yep. Shannon's writing it up here. It's Trey, T R E Y, Watson, W A T S O N, at kw.com. Very easy. Okay. Anything else?
think we're good. We're right on time, too. We are on time. A minute or a minute. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Okay. So if you guys are online, you should be doing your daily successes now.